I want you to meet Paolo. This 29-year-old has been through so much. We recorded this video at the hospital he was stationed at at the moment. With this work, Paolo and myself wanted to spread awareness and light to Crohn's disease. So, so I want to talk English, so I have to switch my mind to is English. It, by the way, is it for you also like that, that when you switch the language, you also switch a bit of your personality? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Today I want to do a special video. It's about Paolo. I know this guy for many years. I met him like in 2012. Yeah, and I met you and I, I saw you and I was like, especially in our scene back then, yeah, our yeah. club scene. Um, the alternative. The alternative castle, castle scene. scene. <laughs> yeah. There were not many people that were working out. I was really shy to, to get in contact with you, to be honest. And then when I did, you were really nice and we took that picture and uh, I was connected to you to, through social media and ever since then, I was watching you. So maybe you should tell us what do you have and what happened all right backtracking a little bit more i was always sort of the more skinny type at school i got bullied a lot because i was into like metal and i wore my black fingernails and black eyeliner I had long hair and so they took me my best friend elias and my good friend carlos as soon as you opened your mouth, they would pick on you. Like, I know that. So yeah. just, just. <laughs> then I started playing guitar, and after a while, me and all the friends that were playing, we got the desire to start making music together. But um, at that point, everybody was like, "Wow, they can play music, and that's so cool!" And at that point, everything switched because I went from being the weird guy to the guy that played guitar, and suddenly I started becoming popular mm -hmm. and suddenly I was yeah in that new world with my first girlfriend um, I spent actually over a year almost a year and a half which was which was the longest relationship of all my life then I started feeling all these new girls getting interested in me so I broke up with her and started like dating random girls and really... At least you did break up, so that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. And I sort of got hooked with this conquering new girls and getting that admiration. Mm. Every time when I heard, oh, you're so cute, you're so... such a good boy, and when I heard that, I was like, I don't want to be cute, I don't want to be a good boy, I want to be good looking, I want to be, I don't know, sexy. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started going to the gym for the first time and I got hooked pretty quickly started also noticing some gains since I am such an impatient person then I started experimenting with illegal drugs and started using steroids and got even more hooked to the gym lifestyle and I became sort of a gym junkie so to speak and then like uh, Rusko said in 2012 I suddenly out of nowhere became ill and started having problems with my stomach and at first it started like a stomach flu where you have to go a lot to the bathroom and are throwing up but it just wouldn't go away I like after one week it was weird that it was still there after two weeks it was very weird then I went to the doctor and he was like, ah, don't worry, here I'm gonna give you some penicillin and it's gonna be alright, but it didn't go away. And then they did a, a colonoscopy and they found out that my um, large intestine was full of ulcerations, like wounds, and that's called like having Crohn's disease. And they said, um, I'm very sorry, but you seem to have Crohn's disease and it's a sickness that you have all your life and um, we don't know where it comes from and we don't know how to heal it. At that point I didn't really take that serious because I never had um, real problems with my health so I was like ah yeah yeah for all my life yeah sure sure. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I did was saying um, when can I go to the gym again because <laughs> I was thinking like ah, as soon as I 
come out of here, I'm gonna get back all my muscles and it's gonna all be like it was all my life. But it didn't come like that. I went out, had to take a lot of medications. And when I tried to go to the gym, instead of feeling better, I felt worse because my body was trying to get rid of the inflammation and when I took away more energy, it had less energy to heal. So I got thinner and thinner. Basically over the next seven years, it kept getting worse and worse. So I was at the hospital for about a month here in Germany once, and a month in Spain, then another month in Spain, then another month here in Germany. Then I had a, a year because I started taking care of myself and started, I don't know, focusing on positive aspects. And I was sort of with my mind in another place. The symptoms started going away. And for about a year I had a, a, almost a normal life. But what I did was I went back to the old habits after a while and I started going out again and drinking oh. and smoking oh. and after a few weeks the illness came back again like with full power kinda like saying Paolo you can't keep living like this if you keep living like this I will fuck you up so bad that you can't do anything and basically that's what happened and it made me again very very ill up until now where it came to a point where I was always sick always at the bathroom sometimes 30 40 times a day and always in pain and with no energy to do anything so most of my days I spent sleeping at some point even sitting when you have such little muscle mass on your legs and on your butt it hurts so you can't even just sit on the computer playing video games because that also hurts so you are basically yeah like in a prison inside your own body where you can only sleep run to the bathroom sleep run to the bathroom the last thing that happened was that i was here in germany and i wanted to get treatment again it was planned that i would come for two days into the hospital to do all the tests and i like you said, I made an Instagram post where I said this is gonna be the shortest stay at the hospital of my life, only two days. Yeah. And I went into the MRT, came out. About 10 minutes later, the doctor came in and he had a very, very serious look on his face. And he was like, ah, I need to talk to you. And I said, why? He said, um, I saw, just saw the results of your MRT and we can see there are three large abscesses in your body that have probably been created through the inflammation in your intestine that's been drained out to those places ah, and <laughs> there was also a fistula which is a connection between tissues so it was a connection between my large intestine and my bladder where blood, pus and even feces from the colon would come through the bladder and come out through the urine which was one of the scariest moments of my life when that happened the first time I was at the supermarket did my business and then I saw that it wasn't just blood that had come out under me or behind me but also in front where the urine would come out it was red and I was like what the hell is happening? So they had to get rid of that problem, get rid of the abscesses, and the uh, large part of the large intestine was so damaged that it would have to be take, uh, took out also. So he said that they would have to do emergency surgery that same night, and they would have to give me a new opening on my stomach with a bag to go to the bathroom. Um, it's called a colostomy bag. That it was a very complicated surgery and that I, if I wanted to speak to anyone before it or something, and I was like, nah, let's just do it. I never take things too seriously and even then I, I, I took it like, all right, I've been super, super sick for seven years, so yeah, 
of course when they do a check on me it's gonna be super super bad so super super bad sort of became the normal in my life so I wasn't really shocked and I just um, sent a voice message to my dad and said dad that they have to do emergency surgery and I'll see you tomorrow <laughs> and <laughs> fish nets <laughs> <laughs> I can't control that. <laughs> Bloopers. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so what, what was that? So this is like your body yeah, doing what your body does. Yeah, you, when you eat you produce gas and when you would normally fart mm. where you can't control it, you can't control it when it comes out of your stomach yeah. because you have, you have no feeling in your stomach. So it just, when it comes out, it comes out. Wow. <laughs> That's how it is. Now, well, there is this saying, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one and uh, all of them stink. Uh -huh. And now I can say, not so quick, buddy. <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it that you take it with humor. And like I said, I was watching your Instagram and your social media for years now. Every time I saw like an accident happening to you, it's getting worse and then better and then worse and getting better and worse. <laughs> and I was always like, and, and you were always so positive and you never gave up. You, you was fighting this battle for so many years, like you said. And even when I felt bad, I was thinking of you and I was like, damn, there's this boy that lives with this for so many years and he's so strong. And I complain about so stupid stuff sometimes, you know what I mean? You gave me a lot of inspiration throughout the years and just so that you know that. Yeah. Thank and I you. think <laughs> you I think you inspire a lot of people. Yeah, it's weird because a lot of people say that to me. They say like, "Wow, you're so strong." And when I uh, see what you're going through, then I'm so motivated. Like most of the times I was in bed or in pain or on the in the bathroom and I was thinking like, "How the hell can I inspire anyone?" I mean, the only thing I do is suffer all the time. <laughs> I guess it's about keep on keeping on <laughs> picking up on the story. They did the surgery and they ended up giving me this beautiful bag that I will show you later if you want. And they gave me a catheter to pee, which was a disaster. It didn't work all the time and it did it three times. And it's not the greatest thing in the world when you get like a tube that's almost like your small finger put into your penis like this and you're fully awake and it's I don't wish that to not even Hitler deserves a <laughs> not even <laughs> not even Hitler <laughs> and that's saying a lot <laughs> and today the doctor c came and that was a very special moment for me and he said um, we are very proud of um, your evolution because it First of all, it was a very severe, um, you were very ill, severely ill, and first we weren't sure you would survive the operation, and then we weren't sure that you would get away with it with little complications, and you had almost no complications, and it's so strange that you are already walking and everything, and we are very happy. And at that moment, it like, clicked in my mind, and I was like, Hell yeah! I am a tough guy and I am a warrior and and it's true what everybody says that that I can still inspire people and just by by not giving up showing that no problem is a final problem. Whenever you think it's the end, it's never the end. There's always something you can do. Whoa! <laughs> well, that turned into something fast. What I wanted to know is for you, how do you, like, what do you see for your future? Like, what do you hope for? Um, well, I learned to sort of manage my expectations. For my future, what I see is, first of all, getting back into a state where I can walk, or longer distances, I mean, it sounds like a very normal thing, but just being able to go to the supermarket, grab a few things and come back. And I'm so excited about the thought of being able to 
going places or eating out and not having to worry all the time where is the bathroom I'm just excited of being able of doing normal things or one of my biggest dreams is spending at least a year or two in Japan mm -hmm. so maybe going there and just teach English and Spanish there for one, a year or two so that I can learn Japanese so yeah that's one of my dreams is being able to watch all those awesome animes and yeah. not having to read all the time this is why you're called multicultural dragon yeah you can follow him on social media I will put the links everywhere and his YouTube channel too just so you know wouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have rain for like three weeks and it was the hottest days in Germany like ever and now we're having this God damn it. Not right now. We had to change the settings because the weather outside is beautiful as you can see. <laughs> and we did, we did have problems with the camera and the lighting here. I mean, we're in a hospital, so it's not easy to talk about this. Or is it easy for you? To me, it's easy. My mom always talked a lot about things like that and it's normal for me. But for me, I have to say, when I got into your room and I saw you laying there, it, it was not easy for me because I was never confronted with a situation like that. I mean, I knew you, but I never like met you like this and in this kind of state. State, yeah. And I don't know many people that are that got through this what you are going through. So I, it was a different um, experience right now. So uh, and I'm really really grateful that I have met you that I. I'm following you all those years and that I'm finally seeing you yeah. <laughs> um, and got to know this person so I'm, I'm really thankful for that I think I can relate to what you must have felt um, when I was six years old my grandmother she had um, cancer and she lived in Peru and then we went to visit her when she had cancer already and we arrived there when it was already dark outside and then we came into the room and she was sitting in her bed because she was always in pain she had no hair anymore she was super thin to me i was six years old i came into the room and i saw like a, something scary mm. it, it didn't look human to me it, that wasn't the the grandmother that i was used to okay now we found something that's hard for me to talk about um, I remember coming into the room and seeing her and it shocked me so much that I, I just left the room, I just ran out because that was my grandma. Afterwards I felt so bad because I thought like what she must have felt. She was in her bed and her, her little nephew came, came from Germany to see her. And the first thing he does when he comes into the room is that he just runs out again. And I felt really bad for doing that afterwards. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm always grateful when I meet people and they sort of still react normally to me. And that's why I also try to always put on a smile and try to be cheerful because I always remember what it was like to to see her in that state and I don't want to shock anybody that and make them feel sad or scared of seeing me like when when I have a weak moment yeah. but you don't have to be like strong all the time I mean I mean, you you are going through stuff. You went through a lot of stuff, and I think it's totally normal and human if you can be like sad or talk about I'm scared or I have pain or I mean that's how it is. And I think if a grown up feels uncomfortable and wants to leave you, then then it's their problem. You know what I mean? They cannot handle that. Yeah. But it's not your. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's how it is. Yeah. That's life. The that's... thing. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Now you see, I'm not just made of steel. <laughs> Paolo, 
I really want to thank you. Yeah. That you let me in your life right now and your past and your present and your future. I'm really grateful that I met you many years ago and that you are still here. Yeah. That you're fighting. It's been a pleasure and it's great to know people, like I said to you, that are real and that don't put up uh, a show to the world. Just be yourself and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, and you be yourself. Thank you. Yeah. I hope that we will have another video in the next time and yeah. there will be more about maybe a different location. Different location. With better lighting. With better lighting. <laughs> and I don't know. Maybe just have fun. Yes. So everybody remember you are we are all beautiful, gorgeous, amazing, talented creatures. And uh, I love you and I love you and I love we love you all. We love Love, everybody love. Support each other. <laughs> so, Paolo, tell us what is Crohn's? Crohn's is basically an autoimmune disorder, which means that your own immune system, out of nobody knows why, attacks your own body. And with Crohn's disease, it can attack any part from your anus to your mouth. Which, okay. in, in my um, case, it's mostly the large intestine was affected. Okay. So, and you had an operation where they took out... Uh, 30 centimeters of my colon. And basically what they did is they opened me up from here to here. And they took out this part of the colon. And they took this part and connected it to a hole which is in my stomach. So basically what is here is my intestine. And what happens now is that when I eat, I don't control it, I don't really feel it, but every now and then the feces just sort of come out here, get into this bag, and then once a day you take it off, clean the skin, and put another one on. And that's basically it. Well, at least you were able to do this interview thanks to this bag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's if you are going through Crohn's disease and you have to get a bag, remember that first of all, it might just be temporary, and second of all, it's not the end of the world. It's easy to change. Um, after a day or two, it just feels normal, you don't really notice it, and it's better than having no life at all. <laughs>